स्वयंभू ही थे ऐसा स्वयंभू यस सर स्वयंभू हाउ आर यू आई एम गुड सर गुड प्लीज टेल मी समथिंग अबाउट योरसेल्फ हेलो सर माय नेम इज स्वयंभू त्रिपाठी आई बिलोंग फ्रॉम राजनांदगांव छत्तीसगढ़ आई हैव डन माय बीटेक इन जो इन्फॉर्मेटिक्स इंजीनियरिंग फ्रॉम यूपीएस देहरादून एंड आई हैव डन माय एमटेक इन पेट्रोलियम जियो साइंसेस फ्रॉम आईआईटी बॉम्बे आई हैव क्वालिफाइड गेट इन बोथ जियो फिजिक्स एंड जियोलॉजी इन द ईयर टू थाउजेंड एंड ट्वेंटी रिस्पेक्टिवली एंड माई डेजर्टेशन टॉपिक वॉज डिटेक्शन ऑफ सरफेस वेव यूजिंग साइसमिक इंटरफेरोमेट्री Okay, so you are coming from a B Tech background. Ah uh, yes, sir. B Tech. And uh, you have eligibility of M Tech in Petroleum Geosciences. Yes, sir. And just be, just just because of this M Tech program, you have you have uh, earned this eligibility for uh, sitting in the examination. Yes, sir. For geologist post. You are not a post graduate in geology. Ah uh, yes, sir. Okay. 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 So. Uh, Where, if you have qualified already the gate examination, both in geology and geophysics, then yes, why did you appear for uh, public sector uh, undertakings? Sir, my rank was in between hundred and one fifty in both uh, geology and geophysics. Okay, so you didn't try to improve your ranks. Uh, sir, uh, actually. Uh, Means after I I have given gate in geophysics, then when I took admission, my subject completely got changed. Then I realized I have to study geology now, and geology was a it's a very vast subject, so it took time for me to prepare geology. So I was working also and was studying geology also at the same time. Okay, so you were already a working professional. I was sir. I left job in April this year. So when did you complete your M Tech program from IIT Bombay? Two thousand eighteen sir. Two thousand eighteen. Okay. So from 2018 you were preparing for combat geosciences examination till then. Okay. Yes, for gate and uh, GSI both together. Okay, so have and you been uh, have you been to recommended to uh, interview program uh, interview for combat geosciences or this is your first attempt? This is my first time, sir. First. Time. Okay, okay. So you never been to UPSC? Uh, no, sir. Okay, okay. So, uh, so Swambhu, I want to tell you something. Uh, See the interview panel will be very uh, encouraging, yes. okay. And since you have completed your M Tech program for, from twenty eighteen, so there mm -hmm. would be uh, a question that you can expect that what were you doing from this time? The for five years it's a no. a lot of time, right? So you have to have prepared for this, okay. Yes. Second one, uh, you are coming from uh, petroleum geosciences program to become yes. a geologist. Yes. Right. So, and your M Tech program uh, recommended recommends you to become a petroleum geologist. Yes. Okay. In petroleum industry, so yes. these kind of questions will be thrown to you. So you have to be prepared for it. Okay. Uh, okay. Let me ask you this question. Uh, when you will be able to easily join the petroleum industry? Why? You, why do you want to become a geologist in GSI? Uh, yes, sir. Because, sir, uh, as my undergraduate project was geoinformatics, which is more of a GIS and remote sensing, and GSI is more focusing on uh, geoinformatics right now. It, it is mission three of GSI, geoinformatics, means digitizing and creating the thematic map. Apart from that, in both my B Tech and M Tech, I have studied almost most of the subjects related to geology, like sedimentology, petrology. and all those subject I have studied so i have a uh, i have a knowledge of, uh, of most of the disciplines of geosciences like gis remote sensing geophysics and geology so i think i will be the uh, good candidate to become a geoscientist in upsc okay fair enough fair enough so uh, swambhu there is a general observation that i want to ask you okay mm -hmm. since you are coming from the petroleum geosciences program uh there is a certain affinity which is being observed in case of hydrocarbon occurrence that they yes. are generally associated with the deserts you can take any desert across the globe and you might get uh, deposits of hydrocarbon or you might get a prospect for the hydrocarbon deposits yes. so why is it so that we are getting this affinity of hydrocarbons towards uh, deserts area 
yes a desert area like uh, like uh, our uh, saudi saudi regions are there where uh, most of the oil, large oil fields are located like uh, gawar oil field gawar oil field so yeah. this uh, this desert where once sir uh, it is a passive margins like our bombay high end is a current passive margin this this were the passive margins at that time which later became desert with the post of time because as it is coming to the western side of the continent so later this this all these thing uh, this areas became desert but initially it was not a desert when when uh, during the uh, paleocene time or miocene time they were not desert at that time okay this is my observation so, sir these were the marine environments uh, they were the shallow marine environments yes shallow marine environments okay so uh, does marine environment favor the formation of crude oil or hydrocarbons uh, yes sir it favors because uh, uh, because of the energy environment there because of formation of a kerogen in, uh, after the dead and decay of the organism they need a uh, quiet environment so that they can easily get buried under the anoxic condition which later can be converted into the kerogen which later produces the oil okay so there is a concept of oil window Are yes, you what is yes, it sir. Sir, oil window is basically a temperature ring uh, where we where the kerogen get converted into uh, oil. Uh, the temperature uh, is between fifty degree to uh, one thirty degree Celsius or one thirty to one fifty. It varies. Okay. So, uh, does it explain the occurrence of hydrocarbons in sedimentary rocks, not in metamorphic and igneous? Sir, oil and gas we mostly get in the sedimentary rocks only because it acts as a good reservoir. And it it is a good source rock also, but in igneous and metamorphic rock also we can get oil. Uh, they can act as a reservoir rock only if the secondary porosity like fractures are present in them. Okay, so there is general saying uh, about the Thar Desert. We are getting uh, oil prospects in Thar Desert also, Badme region. Uh, yes, sir. It is a category one basis. So there is a saying that the hydrocarbon is moving towards Pakistan. So we need to extract as much as of hydrocarbons that we can do before it uh, migrated to the Pakistan. Is it true or just a, a for type? So can I think for five, 10 seconds? Sure, sure. Sir, I have not heard about that the oil is moving toward Pakistan, but I know it is connected to Cambay Rift. Barmer okay. region is connected to Cambay Rift. But as per my knowledge right now, I'm not sure, but it is not connected to Pakistan directly. Okay. Okay. So there is a saying about the petroleum uh, that it is not found in Gondwana Basin or Gondwana Supergroup rocks. Is it true? Yes. Uh, sir, in India, we don't get oil from Gondwana group of rocks. Why is it so? It is a very uh, good sedimentary environment or sedimentary basins or uh, basins to. Uh, for sediment to be get deposited, then why we are not getting petroleum or hydrocarbon deposits in Gondwana? I guess a few factors will be responsible for that. The first thing was first thing which I can think is the time, sir. Gondwana formed during Permian. So time time gap is too much long if we compare to now. Second, the thick thickness of the basin, sir. Gondwana sediments are very deep, and we get oil mostly from up to two to three kilometers in range okay and one more reason is life at that time in gondwana time most of the life were uh, not not as it were during the miocene or times from where we get the oil okay so is it anything to do with the environment like yes, sir, envir environment or fresh water environment uh, yes, sir. Uh, in Gondwana time, uh, the Gondwana sediment is mostly of fluvial origin. And uh, the oil and gas which we get is of shallow marine uh, origin. So it is related to environment also. Okay. Okay. So uh, since you have a great background uh, in geoinformatics. Yes, sir. Right. So uh, can this geoinformatics help us to determine the plate motion? Uh, yes, sir, we can determine the plate motion using GIS. by uh, Like, sir, we can study the maps. 
the Landsat map or different satellite map. Uh, from there, we can see how much the plates are moving. Means not not uh, not in hundred years. Means like uh, from ten to fifteen years data we can get. Second, the use of GPS also, sir, we can do. And many studies are also done by using the GPS. So GSI is also doing the, the how the Indian plates are moving to underneath the Eurasian plate by the use of GPS only. It is one of the project of GSI. So by using GPS and uh, seeing the different remote sensing satellite data, we can infer how much the plates are moving. In terms of Indian context, I'm telling other countries also we can measure. Okay. So there are certain type of resol resolutions used in remote sensing. Can you throw some light on it? Uh, yes, sir. there are ma major four types of resolutions are there. Uh, spatial resolution is first one, means how much the space is between the two objects. How much, if it is very fine, then we can easily discriminate the space between the two objects. Then after that, spectral resolution is there. It tells the wavelength, it is how much wavelength differ is there. After that, radiometric resolution is there, which is based upon the intensity, and then temporal resolution is there, which is based upon how much time we are taking to collect the data. Okay. So, is there any relation between spectral and spatial resolution? Um, uh, yes, is the relation like, sir, uh, like we have uh, like, like, uh, like I need to have higher uh, spectral resolution. So. Yes. May I have uh, at the same time higher spatial resolution without uh, compromising the spectral re resolution? No, sir. Uh, it will be compromised sir, at, at that time. We don't get both uh, them together How? because, sir, like uh, uh, the our for example, sir. With example, can I explain? Sure, sir. Sir, like sir, hyperspectral sensors are there. They have a very good spatial resolution, but uh, because they completely depend upon the wavelength, means the detector are uh, arranged in arrays. They are made to uh, made to, to see the difference in the wavelengths, how much close the wavelengths are. So if we focus, if we focus more on this uh, hyperspectral, uh, more on this one, then our spatial resolution will decrease. Okay, good, good. So Swambu, uh, since you have been to BTEC program, then MTech program, and then came to the geology and studied the, a lot of geology for the prelims and the mains. Okay. So you must have uh, developed some of the interest in a uh, particular subject. Is it any favorite, any favorite subject? Uh, so structural geology I like, sedimentology, whole petrology portion I like. Okay. Uh, and. Uh, Sir, all subject I have a moderate command. Uh, I am little bit weak in uh, paleontology. Okay. So, uh, do you have a gradual interest in sedimentology also? Yes. Sir. Okay. Since it is also closely associated with the petroleum geosciences. Yes. Okay. So, uh, let's start with the Bombay High. Yes. Uh, why Bombay High is known to be Bombay High? Why not Bombay Low? Uh, sir, because uh, the level of the seabed there is high because it's, it is the shape, the structural shape of this is a double plunging anticline. So its shape is like that, sir. It, it looks it is a high. Okay. So what because is the, the structure? So please, please specify uh, four okay. kind of rocks. First is country rock, right? Sir, for Bombay High? No, no. In general. Or Yes. Uh, there are four types of rock type generally defined on the basis of uh, different aspects. Uh, country rock is their name. Uh, yes. There is host rock, there is source rock, and there is uh, reservoir rock. Yes, sir. Can sir, you define all these four? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. sir country rock, uh, country rock is, uh, means a normal rock is present. And suppose if the magma came, it will hit that country rock means it is it is a it is a epigenetic process means like if the dike comes if it is penetrating it is a discordant shape then it is penetrating the country rock which was already present there okay now host rocks are host rock is a rock which have some minerals it uh, like uh, if it carries some mineral it usually forms from the crystallization of the magma for example chalcopyrite uh, Example also, sir, for that is for, like porphyry copper deposit. Okay. So it is a host rock. Then reservoir rock is a rock which contain 
water or oil or a gas it has a good permeability that water oil or gas has been migrated from the source rock or a host rock okay good and good very good so now uh, what is the host rock in bombay high um sir a panna formation is both uh, source as well as uh, sir source rock or we can say reservoir rock what is the reservoir rock in bombay high sir one basehi formation is there it's a limestone limestone yes. okay so uh, limestone would have been deposited by chemical precipitation uh, yes sir. now we know that any uh, sediments which is being precipitated from the chemical solution then it must be of massive in nature yes sir. right and any rock which is massive in nature may be devoid of uh, permeability and porosity yes sir. right then how come limestone become a reservoir Uh, sir, uh, because after the deposition, the digenesis process act on it, especially the dissolution process. Because of this dissolution process, limestone develops a secondary porosity. For example, moldic porosity, vagi porosity, and uh, different this porosity. Uh, uh, this porosity increases the permeability of this limestone. Okay. So as the permeability has increased, it will become a good reservoir. Good, good, good. So you have gradual interest in sedimentology also. Yes. Have you heard about the uh, weathering? Yes. Sir. How do you define weathering? Sir, uh, weathering is a in situ process. Okay. And uh, uh, means when the rock gets subjected to the atmosphere, there is a erosion and transportation takes place in that. But it is a in situ, which is it makes it different from uh, normal erosion definitely. Okay, so erosion involves also the disintegration and removal of the disintegrated particles or sediments. Yes, sir. But in ero erosion, sir, erosion transportation is also present. Okay. So if ero uh, transportation is removed from the erosion, it will be equivalent to weathering or not? Sir, as per uh, sir, can I guess this one? I'm not sure. Sure, sure, sure. Take sir, as per def. As per definition, uh, I think it as it is an in situ process of erosion. Maybe there, but not that much that the rock should move so much far from this provenance. Okay, so in erosion, the removal of the disintegrated material is under the influence of gravity or by any other natural agency. The gravity will be there. Other natural agencies like wind, glacial action, water action, hydraulic action, and all this. Uh, Uh, all these things will present, sir. In case of, so can we say that the mass movement processes are the result of erosion? Mm. Sir, mass movement process basically depend. It's a gravity gravitational erosion process only, sir. It, it is under the influence of gravity and it's a erosion. Okay, so in weathering, we generally say that the disintegration of the pre-existing rock into smaller pieces that is generally referred to the weathering. So yes. then uh, we come to know uh, about the physical weathering and chemical weathering, right? Yes. So physical weathering is simply breaking down of the existing rock. In chemical weathering, there is terminology used congruent and incongruent weathering. Have you heard of it? Okay. Oh. Sir, but okay. Uh, is it same as the congruent and the discongruent melting in case of igneous rock? Okay, so uh, can you define congruent melting or incongruent melting? Uh, yes, sir. In incongruent melting, we get a different product. Okay. Whatever reactant, and in congruent melting, the product is same. It is just uh, atomic substitution. My voice is clear, sir. Yes, yes, you are uh, perfectly audible. Yes, sir. So, uh, can you give any example of incongruent melting? Um, sir, in congruent melting, yes, sir. Uh, like in peritectic point, we have sir, phosphorite plus liquid gives us anstatite. In 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 igneous petrology, I'm talking. Okay. We so are not, making sir. a product, not a melt. Yes, sir. Okay. So we can say when anstatite is subject to melting, then it will yes, produce phosphorite and phosphorite. liquid which is of different yes. composition. Exactly, na? No? Okay. Ah, sir, I gave the example of crystallization. Yes. So, uh, can we agree that the congruent melting is something that indicates the completeness of a process? 
when a particular uh, sample is being subjected to 100% melting, then the melt is generated, whatever the melt is generated, it will have the same chemical composition as its source does. Yes. Sir. Yes. Right. So yes. also in the same manner, we can define that the congruent weathering is the weathering which completes the cycle of weathering. Right. The yes. end product is being achieved. Yes. For example, if the feldspar are subjected to weathering, then the first will the first mineral to be formed by the weathering is kaolinite. Then it is subjected to further chemical weathering, then it will form the alumina rich products and it will add uh, it will end up to bauxite. Oh. Right. So when the chem uh, chemical weathering cycle is completed, then a final product will be achieved, and that represents that the weathering is completed. Oh. Right? Mm -hmm. So I hope this point will help you in somewhere. Okay. Yes. Uh, that's all from my side, Swambu. Uh, over to you, Ram, sir. <clears throat> Hello, Swambu. Hello, sir. Good evening. Hello, good evening. Uh, you just mentioned uh, that uh, your most of the study uh, has been done in geoinformatics. Geoinformatics okay. and... So, and geoinformatics and? Petroleum geosciences, sir. Okay, and you are now uh, interested to join GSI as a geologist, and you yes. mentioned that GSI is uh, working under Mission Three, yes. okay, which is currently in the field of geoinformatics and uh, digitization and ArcGIS tools. So I want to ask you a question because uh, geoinformatics is uh, one of the mission. Uh, because G GSI is running under uh, hybrid mode. There are five missions. And uh, yeah. among these, uh, one mission is mission three, that is you. So uh, you are already, because in GSI, uh, as geologists are being recruited. So yeah. uh, geologist doesn't have choice to go in a particular mission head. So yeah. how would you explain that uh, in other missions also you are benefited to gsi also how would yes, you justify sir. yourself that uh, you also are compatible to work under mission one mission two head also yes like sir in, during my btech and mtech uh, i have studied almost all those courses in geology as well as in geophysics also for example sir i have done internship in ongc which is related to the study of the Kutch Basin, the uh, study of the Kutch Basin using core law. And other study internship I have done under SAIL, Steel Authority of India Limited. It is related to iron ore and Kiru, iron ore mines. And the location was Kiruburu and Megatoburu of Jharkhand. So I have okay. knowledge of uh, almost all the subjects in the geology as well as geophysics and remote sensing. So I will be compatible in other missions also. Okay, you you also worked in a lot of fields and uh, you also are good at uh, different geology subjects. Yeah. Okay, then uh, tell me uh, one thing that uh, you are a student of petroleum geosciences. So you mentioned somewhere kerosene. Okay, yes, so uh, tell me the difference between kerosene and organic matter. Sir, uh, kerosene is basically an organic matter only, but okay. it has been subjected to that much the temperature and pressure that has started to producing oil from it. But a normal, normal organic matter, if it is not subjected to that much pressure or temperature, it can it can release methane like uh, biogas. But mm -hmm. the time constraint also come, like if we, so for example, if we uh, throw vegetable, for example, left of vegetable, it is organic matter only which will start to produce methane. But if it is subjected to temperature, pressure, and time, maybe then in the in the future, in the, after millions of years, it will start to it will convert to kerogen and then on. So you are simply saying that uh, there are a lot of type of kerosene which may produce hydrocarbon or may not produce hydrogen. So generally, how many types of kerosene are there? Uh, sir, four types of kerogen are there. And which uh, type is more... Uh, prone to produce uh, hydrocarbon? Sir, in a uh, decreasing order, if I want to tell that uh, the most prone will be type 1, which is related to algal matter. Then type 2 is marine. Gas or hydrocarbon liquid, both or simple uh, gas? 
sir algae will be mostly producing the li uh, liquid hydrocarbon type 1 okay. type 2 will be both type 2 is of marine origin it can produce both uh, oil as well as gas and type 3 is body matter okay so have you aware of uh, different type of uh, source rock uh, yes sir uh, how many type of source rock are there uh, sir, types of source rock. Sir, Gen generally, know... simply, we say that uh, if a rock contains organic matter subjected to under high pressure or compatible pressure or temperature produce hydrocarbons. We simply say in language. So, there are any classification of source rock? Sir, uh, I know that only shale is the best source rock. About okay. shale, I know, sir. Shale is the best source rock. Other types of source rock, uh, from sir, other rock can also behave as a source rock. If if no, no, I am just asking. Uh, with the respect to the hydrocarbon generation potential, for example, potential source rock, and uh, the source rock which has generated hydrocarbons and now that is dead, like that, there is any classification of source rock? Yes. Um, have you like, have you read about that sir i have read like a good source rock is there potential poor source rock is there this classification i have read it is based on sir total organic carbon present in that. okay okay uh tell me about the different types of trap how many yeah. types of trap are simply name or just one or two lines about that sir major classification are stratigraphical trap structural trap and combination trap in a stratigraphical trap, we get unconformity trap, pinch out okay. wedges. In a structural trap, anticlinical trap is there, a trap related to fault. And in combination trap, we get folded anticline, folded faulted anticline. And sir, best okay. trap is fault dome. Okay. Uh, have you aware about the terminology of conventional hydrocarbon and unconventional hydrocarbon? Uh, yes, sir. Then uh, tell me the example of uh, uh, unconventional hydrocarbon. The unconventional hydrocarbon, uh, the, be the best example is, sir, the production of uh, hydrocarbon using horizontal drilling. If we are doing the horizontal okay. drilling, then it will come under the unconventional. Uh, why why these, are, these are being called conventional or unconventional on what property? What makes them conventional or unconventional? Uh, sir, based on, I think, uh, how much ease, from how much ease we... From how much ease we can we are producing the oil, and uh, uh, do we get the profit okay. or not? Okay, then coal bed methane comes under conventional or non-conventional. So for India, it it comes under non-conventional because it is very difficult to produce coal bed methane because it requires a lot of water for its production. Okay, and in other countries, sir, in, in for example, in USA. Sir, in USA, I'm not sure, sir. Okay. But that's so basically you are you are saying that in present scenario, if we are getting profit uh, by some ex exploring some hydrocarbon, then these are being called conventional. Is it so? Uh, sir, uh, I'm not sure about this. Sir. Okay, 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 okay. Okay. <clears throat> then uh, tell me about the salt diaper. But salt diaper is uh, uh, it is produced because of the density difference between the salt and the overlying rock. So as there is a de density difference is there, this salt is start to move upward, and it will form a uh, salt diaper. It is due to the dens density difference. Only density or plasticity also matters. The plasticity also matters. Okay, okay. Uh, what are the ex other examples of the so? Example of the source rock like uh, sandy stone, like that. How many type of rocks may form uh, uh, source rock? Uh, sorry, reservoir rock. Yes, the reservoir rocks are uh, sandstone can form reservoir rock. Limestone, if the secondary porosity is there, sir. Okay. Even the granite and other igneous rock also can behave as a reservoir rock if the fractures are present in between them. In India, there is any example of any uh, granitic source rock or any sir, in, uh, metamorphic 
Assam okay. Arakan Basin, sir. Uh, there is a there is a oil field name Bor Borohola, Borohola and Champane. These two okay. oil fields are producing. They are producing oil from the uh, granitic base metal. Okay. As you mentioned that you are also very much aware of remote sensing. Okay. Then uh, tell me the uh, navigational satellite system of name of the navigational satellite system of India currently is being under work. Navigation satellite system the Navix. Navix system. Okay. And uh, uh, this is uh, for India, right? Yes, sir. For India. Indian subcontinent or in just Indian continent? Uh, sir, Indian subcontinent as well as 1500 kilometers, all the all the portions of India nearby, 1500 kilometers. Okay, how much satellites uh, uh, are till now deployed in Navic system? Sir, is it nine? Sir? Nine, sir. Okay, let's see if there is nine. In Navic, as many satellites are in Navic, you can see and uh, uh, have you aware about the uh, multi scanning uh, sensor system oh, yes sir mss yes mss in which uh, uh, satellite series uh, it is deployed sir it is deployed in landsat series of satellites <laughs> landsat series okay and uh, what on upon what bands this sensor is working sir mss uh, basically works on uh, visible band and uh, NIR also it works, sir. Visual and NIR. So which band is useful for uh, uh, geological exploration, mineralogical exploration, basically? Uh, sir, sir uh, it depends which kind of survey we are doing, sir. For example... So generally, uh, generally for example, we are uh, exploring for mineral, min mineral exploration. So which yes. band usually is being... Uh, used for this program sir for mineral exploration sir based on their spectral reflectance we can go for mm -hmm. uh, nir to uh, swir and for thermal also because different rock have different thermal inertia so we can choose thermal okay. infrared band also okay how many type of uh, uh, scanning sensor are there so, simply and... Uh, tell me the example of across or yes, along the scanning uh, sensor whisk system. Broom, whisk broom is scanning system and push broom is there. Whisk broom is across and push broom is along along the track. And in MSS, which type of sensor is used? Um, sir, in MSS, we are using whisk broom. Sir. Okay. Okay, and uh, have you uh, aware about the ArcGIS? Uh, yes, sir. I have, uh, uh, yes, what sir, I have. type of uh, project uh, till now have you done under the ArcGIS? Sir, what activity? ArcGIS, yes, sir. Sir, there is one of my internship is there, sir, on Himalaya. So it was detection of snout. Uh, means how much snout has been changed from last fifteen years using remote sensing and GIS. So in that I have projected the Landsat image and my own, I have went to field and collected the GPS point and I have cross checked the snout position <clears throat> from 1995 to 2013 and how much it has been shifted. So I have done the digitization, mosaicing and uh, georeferencing and all those things and I have found out the snout has shifted around 260 meters from 1995 to 2013. Okay. Have you aware about DGPS? Uh, yes. Uh, what is that? Sir, DGPS is Differential Global Positioning System in that we have a station and rover. So it is basically used in the area where uh, where the signals of GPS is not, not we are not able to get the signal of GPS, for example, underground mines or a dense forest. So in that location, we use DGPS. Okay. Is there any uh, regulation difference between GPS and DGPS? Yes, sir. So GPS, like uh, um, the recent Grameen GPS, the, its resolution is plus minus 10 meter and the DGPS resolution is plus minus 0 0.5 meters. Okay, okay. So how many have you have a, uh, uh, idea about uh, roughly number of uh, DGPS station in India? No, sir. That okay, okay. And uh, have you aware about plate tectonics? 
Yes, sir. Then uh, tell me the tectonic setting of Himalayan fold mountain belt. Sir, Himalayan fold mountain belt, if we go from south to north, first we will get Ganga fold and basin. Then we will get... Um, no, no. Tell me just which type of plate boundary is currently this and what type of plate boundary in past was there? Sir, in the past, uh, when the Indian, uh, Indian subcontinent got drifted from Gondwana, then the okay. is present. So it was drifting at that time. Now it is a continent and continent collision. Okay. Now it is... You, you are saying just now it is CC collision. And in past, it was subducting zone. Yes, sir. Okay. Uh, uh, which state you are belong? Sir, Rajanam, no, Chhattisgarh. Chhattisgarh. Okay. Tell me the geology of Chhattisgarh. Briefly, from bottom to top. Yes, sir. From bottom, the south of Chhattisgarh, it basically, basically contains uh, the Bastar Kraton. It is made up of Bastar Kraton. The middle part of the Chhattisgarh is a Chhattisgarh super <laughs> In the northwest of the Chhattisgarh group contain the Gondwana sediments as well as the Deccan traps. Okay. And Chhattisgarh and... super group occupies sir, 50 percent of the Chhattisgarh area. Uh, Bastar Craton 28 percent, Deccan trap 11 to 12 percent. Okay. Have you ever gone to a geological field? Uh, yes, sir. I have went. Uh, which area you visited? Sir, I visited Meghatuburu and Kiruburu iron ore mines, which is in Jharkhand and Bihar border. Okay, tell me the uh, definition of base map. Sir, uh, ba sir base map is the uh, fundamental map in that we can later put the different legends. Like uh, if we want to put, suppose, which feature is there, like different thematic map, we can map. Topo sheet is base map or not? Yes, the topo sheet is a base map, sir, which we uh, get from the okay. JSI. Okay. Then uh, tell me the rough, uh, dif roughly difference between uh, topo sheet and geological map. What type of informations are in geological uh, map or what are to type of information which are not in the topo sheet map? Sir, in topo sheet map, cultural features are also there like temple and uh, buildings, hospitals. In, geolo in geological map, we only get the structural features and contour Contour lines contour are... Contour lines okay. are there in structure map. Yeah, contour lines are there in uh, geological map? Or yes, not? sir. Contour lines are there in geological map. Do you have any seen geological map which represents contour map along with the lithology? Kisi book mein aapne dekha hai, sir, geological map jis mein lithology ke saath contour bhi ho? I have seen the cross section map. I think I'm wrong with that, sir. In cross section map, thickness. To, is uh, yes, yes. To form a cross section, you are required contours. Yes, sir. Okay. So, this is all from uh, my side, Shambhu. Very nice interactive session. So, I over to Feather. Shambhu? Yes, sir. Aapka... Uh, prelims or mains, how did it happen? Prelims are very good, sir. I have all the questions in the 200 में 200. And in the sir, I am in UR category, sir. So, I am in 180 and 185. So, in the prelims, how much score is in the prelims? Sir, I am in 180 and 190. And mains are very good. Sir, mains are very good. I have written all the questions. You think that you will be good with your rank. Your rank will also be good with your rank. The way you will be able to get your basic command. And the way you will be able to get your knowledge. You will be able to get your basic other subjects. Your basic is very good. I don't think that there will be any reason why there will be any reason. और आपका पेट्रोलियम जियोलॉजी हर जो सब्जेक्ट हमने टच किया वो बहुत अच्छा है और मेरी तरफ से तो कोई मिस्टेक्स है नहीं मुझे कुछ लगा नहीं आ, कमी और बस ऑल द बेस्ट है ना सर मतलब वो इंटरव्यू में चांस तो सर इंटरव्यू में मतलब चांस तो देंगे ना मतलब ऐसे रिजेक्ट तो नहीं कर देंगे कि जो इन्फॉर्मेटिक्स है ये तो एक्स्ट्रा टेरेस्ट्रियल ऑब्जेक्ट है नो 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 अगर आप आपको दो चीजें बताता हूं अ पहली बात तो यह है कि आपको कोई ये अपॉर्चुनिटी भीख में नहीं दे रहा है ठीक है इसमें 
इसमें एक मिनट तो इसमें जैसे जैसे आपने बोला था ना कि मैंने आपसे पूछा कि मिशन एक ही रीजन हो सकता है कि आपका जो आ, जो आपका ग्रेजुएशन हुआ है वो एक नेरो है जियोलॉजी जियो, में क्योंकि जियोलॉजी पूरा आ गया आपने मिशन थ्री तो जो आपने जिस तरीके का एक्सप्लेन किया कि आपने इसमें भी काम किया अदर फील्ड में भी काम किया है ना अदर मिशन हेड में भी आप उतने ही कम्पेटेबल है जितने आप मिशन थ्री में है ना तो कोई रीजन नहीं है इसका अगर आप एलिजिबल है आप यहाँ तक पहुंच गए तो आगे भी हो जाएगा उसमें कोई डाउट नहीं है हाँ भाई हाँ तो पहली बात तो ये कि आपकी ने एलिजिबिलिटी कमाई है आपको किसी ने गिफ्ट में नहीं दिया आपको किसी ने भीख में दिया तो यू आर वेरी मच एलिजिबल एज अदर कैंडिडेट आर तो ये कोई दिक्कत नहीं है ठीक है दूसरा आप बहुत हम्बल हैं बहुत आप में ह्यूमिलिटी है बहुत आप सॉफ्ट स्पोकन है बहुत आपके आंसर टू द पॉइंट्स है क्रिस्प हैं जहाँ नहीं आता आप ब्लफ नहीं कर रहे हैं बिल्कुल भी अराउंड उसे स्टॉक नहीं हो रही है नहीं आ रहा है तो आप सिंपली उसको मना कर रहे हैं आ रहा है तो बहुत अच्छे से आर्टिकुलेटेड आंसर आप दे रहे हैं और बहुत प्लेजेंट पर्सनालिटी है आपकी ठीक है तो कोई भी पॉइंट नहीं है कि आपको 130 से कम मार्क्स मिले है ना आपका इंटरव्यू इससे भी बहुत अच्छा होएगा हम हमें जितना लगता था जितना आपका बहुत वेरिड बैकग्राउंड है उसके हिसाब से काफी चीजों को टच करने की कोशिश करी है और आपने बहुत अच्छे आंसर दिए हैं और कोई को, कोई का, कोई कारण नहीं है आपको कम नंबर आने का कोई कारण वन फोर्टी आप मान के चलिए हाँ आपको बहुत अच्छे मार्क्स मिलेंगे और यू विल इजीली थ्रो दिस एग्जामिनेशन विद वेरी फ्लाइंग कलर्स है ना बहुत बहुत अच्छी रैंक में और जस्ट आप जो अभी जो टाइम आएगा आपका आपका इंटरव्यू किस डेट को है ट्वेंटी टू का सर हाँ तो जब तक आपका है जो बेसिक्स आप पढ़ लीजिए जैसे आप कोई करंट अफेयर पढ़ते रहिए अवेयर रहिए चीज से है ना तो चीजों से अवेयर रहोगे तो आप आंसर मुझे लगता है कि आप अवेयर हो क्योंकि हमने वो एस्पेक्ट टच नहीं किया करंट अफेयर वाला लेकिन जो भी क्वेश्चन आपसे पूछे जाएंगे मुझे लगता है आप आंसर कर लेंगे तो हमें कोई प्रॉब्लम नहीं लगा और आपको कुछ पूछना हो तो पूछिए आप सर प्रीलिम्स में सफिशियंट मेरा फर्स्ट टाइम है सर जीएसआई मैं थोड़ा लेट हो गया भले एग्जाम के और इन सफिशियंट मार्क्स आपको प्रीलिम्स में अगर 180 प्लस से ऊपर है तो आप बहुत है और कंपटीशन से बहुत आगे हैं क्योंकि प्रीलिम्स में आदमी ये मान के चलिए 190 95 के अराउंड ही रहते हैं ज्यादातर स्टूडेंट है ना और आपका अगर मेंस बहुत अच्छा है ना तो बहुत अच्छे नंबर देंगे वो भर भर के नंबर देंगे सर मेंस में सर 100 से ऊपर नंबर आते हैं ना आते हैं हाँ हाँ आराम से आते हैं वन थर्टी भी आते हैं ऐसी बात नहीं है वो आते हैं उसका कोई इशू नहीं ठीक है तो यू वुड बी वन ऑफ द टॉपर्स होगा हम आपको फोन करके बधाई देंगे कि ये लो भैया मिठाई ले आओ हाँ <laughs> सर पक्का आऊंगा मैं क्या तो? बिल्कुल बिल्कुल शंभू ये मान के चलिए जैसे मान लीजिए अगर आप 140 भी स्कोर करते हैं क्योंकि मेरे दोस्त हैं जो ठीक ठाक है बोलने में वो भी 140 फोर्टी अटेम्प्ट है है ना तो 140 भी अगर आपको इसको आता है 300 आप मुझे लगता है कि 300 हंड्रेड में आप ले आओगे और 570 सौ सत्रह के आसपास कट ऑफ रहेगी जन यू आर की जहां तक मेरा आइडिया पांच सौ है ना तो अगर वन भी आप उधर जोड़ लो इधर आप तीन प्लस ही जोड़ लो इधर आप वन फोर्टी आराम से आपका रैंक अच्छा आएगा अच्छा रैंक आएगा छह सौ तीस एक सॉरी राम टू इंटरप्ट यू स्वयं वो एक जनरल ऑब्जर्वेशन है जो महेंद्र सर आप कोऑर्डिनेट कर रहे हैं ना उन्हीं का है और उनका ये कहना है कि आपका थोड़ा सा वॉइस जो है ना वो थोड़ा सा धीरे है है ना हाँ उसको थोड़ा सा और तेज आप कर सकते हैं यस यस और उसके लिए एक छोटी सी प्रैक्टिस आप ये कर सकते हो कि जनरली क्या होता है यूपीएससी का जो लेआउट रहता है उसका मैं वीडियो भी बनाऊंगा वो भी आप देख लेना उसमें ये रहता है कि एक राउंड टेबल रहती है बीच में चेयर पर्सन रहेंगे और उनके इर्द गिर्द तीन मेंबर और होंगे तो टोटल चार लोग रहेंगे और बीच में आप मान के चलिए कि चार से पांच फिट का फासला होगा आपके और उन मेंबर्स के बीच तो आप घर में एक ऐसी छोटी सी प्रैक्टिस कर लीजिए कि आपसे चार से पांच फीट की दूरी पे कोई बैठा और वो आपसे पूछे और आप उनको जवाब दे और उनको वो क्लियरली सुने है ना सुने किसी भी चीज को लेकर के सर वो उसमें प्रॉब्लम नहीं है सर मैं स्कूल में पढ़ाता था मैं पांच साल टीचर ही था सर अरे माइक में पता नहीं चलता कितना तेज बोल रहा है मैं पांच साल टीचर था सर बहुत सब कुछ अच्छा ये सारी चीज सब अच्छा है
बट अगर वो एक बार आपको बोल देंगे ना कि थोड़ा सा लाउडली बोलिए तब एक बार आप में वो एक दो मिनट हेजिटेशन रहेगा फिर ठीक है थोड़ा लिप्स अच्छा